it seems to be valid to acknowledge that the modern world has lost connection with nature and the way humans throughout all the ages have experienced nature and God. When you see a pride of lions devouring its prey, usually it is rather bloody and awful for modern human sensibilities. However, reason demands that we admit that it is the most natural thing and if you believe in God or not, that is nature. The very nature that many materialists believe to be the way Richard Dawkins describes it. No design, no purpose, no evil, no good, nothing but pitiless indifference. Because of this misplaced outlook, many modern people cannot see any spiritual or conscious significance in nature's blood and sacrifice. Modern people seem to have the most unnatural outlook on nature when it comes to blood and sacrifice. On the one hand, they worship it as the origin of species. And on the other hand, they reject all meaning it might have when it points to God's ultimate sacrifice. Especially today, they deny God's existence because of pain and suffering, while they worship it as their own explanatory idol. However, the Christian view of blood and sacrifice is that all blood and sacrifice are precious and bring life. It always needs to achieve those precious godly objectives through the symphony of organisms sustaining each other in an eternal song of life. Throughout the process of creation, God designed all biological change towards his objectives. No prey who feeds its fellow bacteria during the first part of creation or today's prey that feeds the lions are useless or meaningless suffering. It is precious to life and to God. Do Christians really make sense of this reality? Or do we have an Eden view that had no predators and prey? This mechanistic utopia or misplaced Christian idea does not seem to be a rational or theologically sound point of view for one reason in particular. We cannot deny God's intentions for communion and sanctification to be fundamental. Even during our time in the Garden of Eden, our relationship with God is perfect. Only because we have communion and are able to sanctify our intentions to be in relationship with God. In the garden, it was uniquely the humans, intentionally created in God's image through his deliberate act of creation, who reached a point on the consciousness spectrum that enabled them to transcend physical communion, such as that expressed through blood and sacrifice. Humanity seen from this point of view did not need to achieve life through blood and sacrifice anymore, and were in perfect communion with God each other and nature in our original state. However, this does not mean that any of the other creatures had the same image of God. Therefore, they still partook of communion with God through blood and sacrifice, like the lion and its prey. While humans only needed that communion through spiritually sacrificing their own being freely to God within a love relationship. This should then explain the fall of man in a much deeper sense as our rebellion and complete disconnect from our communion with God. That rebellion certainly could have had physical impacts on the nature of our relationship with the blood and sacrifice that is supposed to lead to communion with God. It might have rendered the blood and sacrifice meaningless when it became disconnected from our communion with God, when it became focused on our own humanistic intentions, and the entire universe still contains meaningless pain and suffering because of that. But note that it does not remove the pure wonder and intentions God have with blood and sacrifice. Making sense of the lion's lunch then becomes natural to see that all organisms that celebrate the symphony of life are there to increase our consciousness 
of each other and of God. All physiological and psychological processes prove that to be the case. In the biggest challenges and struggles, physically and psychologically, our senses and emotions seem to go into overdrive, but not for blind, pitiless reasons, but still searching for perfect communion with God and each other, the highest possible consciousness there is. And during those times of acute conscious awareness, our human agency is at its most pronounced successfulness, as we observe during experiences of higher cognition of any kind, not just in duress. It is for that reason that those who focus their struggle for mechanistic survival and the so-called blind, pitiless indifference might not be able to make sense of human suffering or how it leads and has led since all ages in all communities to spiritual enlightenment and connection with God. These are historical facts. People and all living creatures seek communion with God since the moment God created us. Just think how precious all life is just because of this property of communion with all creatures and with God, each in its special place on the spectrum of consciousness. God speaks in such a way to ensure that we will not perish or go out of existence if we are confronted with all his transcendent power and authority, which was able to bring agency beyond what purely mechanistic processes can achieve. He speaks in a way that always makes communion with him possible. The ultimate proof of this is and for eternity will be Jesus Christ's perfect blood and sacrifice. That perfect and eternal process of sanctification was restored in Christ's resurrection. No drop of blood or millisecond of suffering will ever be meaningless because of Christ's blood and sacrifice. Evil will always cry out for justice and will always find justice in Jesus Christ's judgment. It is the power of God. It is therefore clear that from a Christian perspective, there is no clear conscious excuse for any human to human malevolence, only mechanistic ones. But the blood and sacrifice from all places on the consciousness spectrum must always be sanctified towards the communion with God that has been achieved through the ultimate and final sacrifice in Jesus Christ. Communion with God is the objective. In Christ, any individual can accept communion with God or reject it. It is our divine choice. We can release our self-communion, self-love rationalizations of our rejection of God onto the world, onto nature. It is God's divine choice. God and the wisdom in nature as God create and sustain it, will reject our objectives of destruction. God will keep on speaking through all of his creation. It is just foolish that we might think our enlightenment rationalizations, which we prefer to call skepticism, have anything other in mind than to increase our consciousness of God calling gently on us. It cannot be resisted in the end because Romans 1 verse 20 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse.